Christmas season, let it be our duty and delight to hear once more the message of the angels, and in heart and mind to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against him until the glorious redemption brought to us by his holy child Jesus. And let us make our homes glad with our carols of but first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and justice on earth, 
for the unity and mission of the church for which he died, and especially for his church in our country and in the state of Utah. And because he particularly loves them, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother, and that whole multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. And now, to sum up all these petitions, let us pray in the words which Christ himself has taught us, saying, the Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ give us the joys of everlasting life. And to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of Angels bring us all. Amen. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. 
but a stream would rise up from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. And then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. 
The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there. It shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. And no traveler, not even a fool, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Prepare the royal highway, the King of kings is near. Let every hill and valley a level road appear. And greet the King of glory, foretold in sacred story. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. Oh, sing a joyful song, sing alleluia, praise the Lord. Oh, sing a joyful song, sing alleluia, praise the Lord. Sing praise, sing praise to the Lord. Alleluia, praise the Lord. Alleluia, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Prepare the royal highway, the King of kings is near. Let every hill and valley a level road appear. Then greet the King of glory, foretold in sacred story. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. third lesson from Zephaniah. The Lord will be among us. We are summoned to rejoice and sing. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. And he will exult over you with loud singing. As on a day of festival, I will remove disaster from you, so that you will not bear reproach for it.
See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and, is, and as in former years. Here ends the reading.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Here ends the reading. generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul proclaims the flame in the south of the earth. My spirit rejoices in for he has looked with faith on his servant. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their throne. And has lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the reigns of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with faith upon his own servant. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to all fathers. To Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has served with faith on his Lord. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Matthew. <clears throat> now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man, and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne her firstborn son, and he named him Jesus. The word of the Lord. Celitum Joseph decus atque nostre, certas ves vite columen quem hundi, quas tibi leti canimus benignus Rex Deus Regum Dominator Orbis, Cuius ad nutum tremit inferorum, Turba cui pronus famulator eter se. Lausit excelse triadi perenis, quae tibi prebens superos honores, deto his nobis meritis beate gaudia vite.
from the Gospel of Luke, the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. lesson from Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 16. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. 
This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known for us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. A reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, 
so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Lectura del libro de San Juan. En el principio ya existía el verbo y el verbo estaba con Dios y el verbo era Dios. Él estaba con Dios en el principio. Por medio de él todas las cosas fueron creadas. Sin él nada de lo creado llegó a existir. En él estaba la vida y la vida era la luz de la humanidad. Esta luz resplandece en las tinieblas y las tinieblas no han podido extinguirla. Vino un hombre llamado Juan. Dios lo envió como testigo para dar testimonio de la luz, a fin de que por medio de él todos creyeran. Juan no era la luz, sino que vino para dar testimonio de la luz. Esa luz verdadera, la que alumbra a todo ser humano, venía a este mundo. Él era la luz que ya estaba en el mundo. Fue criado por medio de él pero el mundo no lo reconoció. Vino a los que eran suyos, pero los suyos no lo recibieron. Mas a cuantos lo recibieron, a los que creen en su nombre, les dio el derecho de ser hijos de Dios. Estos no nacen de la sangre, ni por deseo naturales, ni por voluntad humana, sino que nace de Dios. Y el verbo se hizo hombre y habitó entre nosotros. La gloria que corresponde al Hijo Ungénito del Padre, lleno de gracia y de verdad.
Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the good news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the word made flesh, join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Thank you.